Hello guys and welcome back again to the Tactic YouTube channel. As you can see in front of you there is a bunch of hardware, one being the AMD's flagship graphics card Fury X. And before we start with anything, I just wanted to tell you that this topic came alive out of pure curiosity and fun, as the title suggests. And it's not meant to be a serious or make any sense whatsoever, in a way this should be a real case scenario for you to have or buy. The rising performance of the Intel SoC segment from generation to generation was a good trigger for motherboard manufacturers to put them in their portfolio as a completed BGA solution with a passive heatsink. We just recently did an overview of such motherboard, the Astrox N3700 ITX, and actually it was the cause of this experiment. My basic premise here was to see if this budget-oriented embedded CPU and motherboard solution can be turned into a sort of capable gaming machine if you put a dedicated value graphics card on it. In our case that was the Asus R7370 Strix model, but since at the time being we also had a Fury X card, out of curiosity again, we decided to check its performance as well in a scenario like that one, since you already all know that it kicks ass in a regular environment. Basically we wanted to see how far did those small 4-core Atom-like CPUs came performance-wise, are they capable of of anything serious, especially since the combination of it with a more budget-oriented graphics card sounds viable in theory, and later on we will see if that's actually true. So, we rounded up certain hardware to see how a dedicated graphics card stacks up with a borderline mobile-like CPU platform like Bale Trail D, which is made for tablets and laptops, low-power devices in general. As we had in our hands the aforementioned Astrock N3700 ITX motherboard, our first thought was actually to check out if this new successor of the Bale Trail D platform, the Intel Brazil platform, can offer enough horsepower to run a dedicated lower-tier graphics card to its full potential. Beside the N3700 ITX, we also used the N3150M model, which has a slower CPU model on it, just to see if we were bottlenecking in a larger or smaller amount, on account of the fact that we only had a PCI Express X1 2.0 slot at our disposal for connecting the graphics card to the motherboard. Of course, we are aware that PCI Express X1 speed was a bottleneck for sure, but we wanted to see how bad it can get and when it actually kicks in, in relation to the CPU bottleneck, which we will definitely experience. As you will see later on, it turns out that the PCI express bandwidth was the least of our problems. Since the stronger ITX motherboard model only had a physical X1 PCI Express slot, we used an Astrox X1 to X16 slot adapter which you can buy for yourself, or even better yet, you can buy the same but cheaper ribbon style cable adapter from eBay. After putting the SOD RAM into the N37 ITX motherboard, connecting everything up was very simple and straightforward. The only thing that we had to do out of the ordinary is to make an improvised stand for the graphics card. First in line was the weaker R7370 model, and as you can see on the screenshot that we took, everything was recognized and working properly, no problems whatsoever. Taking a look at the performance, there's a clear and expected drop in performance in comparison to our X99 testing platform, which had an Intel Core i7-5960X on it. The difference itself actually isn't that big if you look at only GPU-dependent benchmarks and games like Tomb Raider, which has an excellent foundation engine, which relies more on the GPU rather than on the CPU. On the other hand, the rest of the games performed poorly, but again not necessarily because of the GPU performance, but rather because of the lack of the CPU performance which handled certain in-game tasks. The conclusion is that this Brazil CPU actually isn't that far from pushing the R7370 to its full limit, but definitely not good enough if you combine it with CPU demanding games, which then renders the R7370 almost unuseful. Putting the Fury X onto the Brazil platform, we came to the point where the lack of CPU performance in combination with the PCI Express X1 2.0 bandwidth speed outputs over two times worse results in GPU dependent benchmarks, while in games it climbs up to a whooping 3 to 5 times in performance difference in comparison to the X99 platform. We can't say that we were surprised by these results, but it's definitely interesting to see the real life performance of this kind of scenario. At least we came to a conclusion which eliminated the possibility of a larger PCI Express bandwidth bottleneck in relation to the R7 370 testing. It seems that the PCI Express X1 2.0 slot can throughput performance beyond what's R7 370 capable to deliver, as the Fury X delivered far more than it, using that same slot. 
Although there is of course an obvious difference in performance between R7 370 and Fury X on a Bryswell platform, it's just too far from being a realistic one if you would compare them using and based on an X99 platform. If you compare the difference in results between them on a Bryswell platform, you can see that it goes as low as 10 to 15%, while in normal scenario that would be well over 200%. Changing the CPU with the use of N3150M motherboard model, which actually has a full-sized physical PCI Express X16 slot with X1 2.0 electrical configuration. In the example case of Fury X card, you can see that the performance scales almost perfectly in relation to the smaller CPU frequency, which N3150 has in comparison to the N3700 model, 2.08 GHz versus 2.4 GHz. As you can see, this around 14% decrease in CPU frequency brings in almost the same decrease in GPU performance of around 10%. All in all, although we pretty much had an expected experience, this was a very interesting experiment nonetheless. A $100 embedded CPU and motherboard solution definitely sounds very tempting, especially if it's strong enough that it can be paired with a lower tier dedicated graphics card, but as for now it seems that we are still far from that, hopefully in the near future. The new Intel Brazil platform definitely has some capable CPUs, but unfortunately and expectedly not for tasks like gaming as we just personally witnessed. Thank you guys once again for watching, hope you find this amusing and interesting as I did. Feel free to ask me any questions, leave a comment down below if you would like to see more unusual topics like this one and do you even like the name of this video series, The Curious Geek. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you like this video, feel free to share it also and of course subscribe to our Tactic YouTube channel for more further content like this where you can check out our other videos from before.